What is the seal of God in the book of Revelation? In the New Testament, the word sealed originates from a Greek word that means to stamp with a private mark. It means to keep something hidden or protect or conserve the sealed object. The use of seals was common in official contexts. For example, a Roman centurion would have affixed a seal to a document that was intended solely for the review of his superior. If the seal were broken, the person who received the letter would know that the letter had been altered or read by someone other than the person who had originally sealed it. We see the seal of God in the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation, filled with mysterious visions and messages, introduces us to the idea of God's seal in a very special and meaningful way. Revelation 1 tells us, The revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place, he made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who testifies to everything he saw, that is, the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. This part of the Bible starts to explain the important messages that come later, including the meaning of God's seal. The seal of God is like a special sign from God it shows that God is protecting certain people, that they belong to Him, and that they are genuine followers of His. The seal is talked about during the wild and scary events in Revelation's visions. It's important to know that this seal isn't a physical mark. It's more like a spiritual badge. It's a way to show who is really connected to God and who is under His protection. The concept of sealing in Revelation ties back to the ancient practice, but elevates it to a spiritual level. It's not just about authority and authenticity. It's about belonging to God and being identified as his own in trials and tribulations. The spiritual seal serves as a powerful metaphor for faith and divine safeguarding in a world of chaos and uncertainty. As we look further into this topic, we find that the seal of God is really important. It shows that God promises to protect us and wants us to stay loyal to him. It tells us that even when times are tough, God has marked those who are His, and He will keep them safe. The mark of God shows up during the tribulation. The tribulation is a future seven-year period when God will finalize His judgment of the unbelieving world. Throughout the Word of God, the tribulation is associated to the day of the Lord, which refers to the period of time when God will directly intervene in the course of history to bring about the fulfillment of His plan. That day will be a day of wrath, it will be a day of agony and anguish. It will be a day of trouble and devastation. It will be a day of darkness and gloom. It will be a day of clouds and darkness. It will be a day of trumpet and battle cry. The tribulation period will be characterized by a variety of divine judgments, turmoil in the heavenly sphere, natural calamities, and horrific plagues. During this dark period, we see the seal of God as judgment being held back until the servants of God are sealed. Revelation chapter 7, verses 1 through 3. After this I saw four angels stationed at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth, so that no wind would blow on the earth, or on the sea, or on any tree. Then I saw another angel coming up from the rising of the sun, holding the seal of the living God. And with a loud voice he called out to the four angels to whom it was granted to have authority and power to harm the earth and the sea, saying, do not harm the earth, nor the sea, nor the trees, until we seal, mark, the bondservants of our God on their foreheads. The phrase four corners of the earth is an ancient and sometimes modern equivalent to the idea of the four points of the compass. The concept here is that these angels have an effect on the whole planet. We read, holding the four winds of the earth. These winds were a destructive force of God's judgment, as winds are frequently depicted as being in the Old Testament. Following the pattern of Zechariah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8, it's possible that the four winds of the earth are a reference to the four horsemen that are mentioned in Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 through 8 describes a section in which four chariots, each pulled by a horse, go around the earth and are referred to as the four spirits of heaven. Another angel, who also possessed a seal, was the one who put it on the people of God. These kinds of seals were commonplace in the ancient world. A king or other person who owns property can use a seal to demonstrate ownership or authenticate documents. 
These servants of God will obtain a shielding seal on their forehead, containing God's name in some manner. The concept of sealing is also seen in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 through 14, where it is written, In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it, to the praise of his glory. Here, the seal is equated with the Holy Spirit, given to believers as a sign of their salvation and a promise of their eternal inheritance. The 144,000 Sealed Servants The 144,000 Sealed Servants is a mix of mystery, symbols, and promises about the end times. This talks about 144,000 of God's servants being specially chosen and marked for protection. These servants come from the 12 tribes of Israel. The act of sealing, as described in Revelation, signifies a divine mark of protection and ownership. In Revelation chapter 7, verse 4, it says, And I heard how many were sealed, 144,000, 12,000, sealed from every tribe of the sons of Israel. This sealing process is not just a literal marking, but symbolizes a spiritual preservation during times of tribulation. Each of the 12 tribes of Israel contributes 12,000 members, signifying a completeness and perfection in God's selection. The number 144,000 is rich in symbolism. In biblical numerology, 12 often represents divine authority and completeness. Multiplying 12, tribes by 12,000 members from each tribe suggests a magnified completeness. Additionally, the total, 144,000, is seen by some as symbolic rather than literal, representing the totality of God's people, both Jews and Gentiles, marked as faithful servants. The sealing of the 144,000 is a sign of God's sovereignty and His ability to preserve His chosen ones in the midst of chaos and destruction. This notion offers comfort to believers, assuring them of God's protection and the importance of faithfulness. Also, choosing 144,000 people from the 12 tribes shows God bringing His people back together. It reminds us that God keeps a close relationship with Israel. In conclusion, the narrative of the 144,000 sealed servants is an indication of hope, assurance, and divine promise. It's not just about a select group from history, but a timeless symbol of God's protection and the ultimate triumph of good over evil. We are not informed what precisely their service is, but the 144,000 are sealed for a distinctive and special purpose. However, the concept of being sealed as a whole isn't restricted to them in any way. Jesus was given a seal, and the Father in heaven affixed his own seal to Jesus. John chapter 6, verse 27. Do not work for food that perishes, but for food that endures and leads to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you, for God the Father has authorized him and put his seal on him. We have been sealed with the Holy Spirit, Paul wrote, God has also sealed us and given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 21 through 22. Now it is God who establishes and confirms us in joint fellowship with you in Christ, and who has anointed us, empowering us with the gifts of the Spirit. It is He who has also put His seal on us. That is, He has appropriated us and certified us as His and has given us the Holy Spirit in our hearts as a pledge, like a security deposit to guarantee the fulfillment of His promise of eternal life. This sealing of the Holy Spirit is given to every believer upon salvation. Having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. In Him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the good news of your salvation, and as a result, believed in Him, were stamped with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit, the one promised by Christ, as owned and protected by God. The sealing of the Holy Spirit provides comfort and challenge to believers, affirming their belonging to Him. It is a challenge to us to turn away from everything that is wicked and to identify ourselves with the one to whom we belong. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. 
Nevertheless, the firm foundation of God, which he has laid, stands, sure and unshaken despite attacks, bearing the seal. The Lord knows those who are his. And let everyone who names the name of the Lord stand apart from wickedness and withdraw from wrongdoing. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, but seek to please him by whom you were sealed and marked, branded as God's own for the day of redemption, the final deliverance from the consequences of sin. Contrast with the Mark of the Beast The seal of God and the Mark of the Beast from the book of Revelation show a big difference between good and evil, and between God's power and the power of the world. The Seal of God The Seal of God, mentioned in Revelation chapter 7, verses 2 through 3, represents divine protection and ownership, it's given to God's faithful followers, marking them as His own in a spiritual sense. Unlike a physical mark, it symbolizes a deep, personal commitment to God and His teachings. Processing the seal of God indicates a spiritual safeguarding during times of trial and judgment. It's a sign of being chosen by God, reflecting a life lived in accordance with divine principles. The Mark of the Beast The Mark of the Beast talked about in Revelation chapter 13 verses 16 through 17, is a sign that shows loyalty to the beast, a bad character against God. It means turning away from God and choosing to follow the power of people in the world, which is often not right or good. The Mark of the Beast appears in Revelation. The Mark of the Beast is referred to as the Mark of the Beast because it is brought into being by a man who is referred to as the Beast. According to the Bible passages in Revelation chapter 16, verse 2, and 19, verse 20, the mark of the beast is a symbol that distinguishes those who worship the beast. Revelation chapter 13, verses 16 through 17. Also, he compels all, the small and the great, and the rich and the poor, and the free men and the slaves, to be given a mark on their right hand or on their forehead, signifying allegiance to the beast, and that no one will be able to buy or sell except the one who has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. He causes all to receive a mark. A mark will be given to everyone under the government of the beast and his associate. This mark is necessary to participate in the economy, and those without it will not be able to buy or sell anything. Only those bearing a special number on a visible part of their body, hand or forehead, will be allowed to trade and the number will only be marked on those who engage in imperial idolatry. The number 666 is the coded name of the dictator. We have already discussed its meaning, the nature of apocalyptic writing. Until he arrives, when his identity with this figure will be only too obvious, all attempts to decode it are useless speculation. One thing is clear, he will fall short of perfection, seven in every regard. The word karagma in ancient Greek language refers to a mark, but it is not commonly associated with people. Thus, some interpret it as a symbolic mark. However, the idea of a physical mark being required for buying or selling is not impossible and could be practical. The technology to give people a mark that enables them to buy and sell in the electronic economy is available. There are many different ways it could happen, and such programs are proposed and tested constantly. A mark on their right hand or on their foreheads. Satan is not a creative being. All he can do is imitate God. We are not surprised to find that this too is a satanic parody of something God will do. It imitates God's mark upon his people. The Number of the Beast Revelation chapter 13 verse 18 here is wisdom. Let the person who has enough insight calculate the number of the beast, for it is the imperfect number of a man, and his number is 666. 666 is the one that captures attention. It is made up of sixes, a figure that always alludes to the inability of humans to achieve the seven that represents complete perfection. It is used here as a clue to the identity of the last world dictator before Jesus reigns for a thousand years. The term Mark has no special biblical usage apart from its association with the beast. 
The Greek term karagma was most commonly used for imprints or documents or coins. Karagma is well attested to have been an imperial seal of the Roman Empire used on official documents during the first and second centuries. In addition to its use in Revelation, the term karagma appears only once in the New Testament, specifically in Acts chapter 17, verse 29, where it refers to an artistic image. Taking this mark is like turning your back on God. It shows you're choosing to side with those against God. It's not just a mark you can see on your body. It really means you're living your life against what God wants. The Seal of God versus the Mark of the Beast The Seal of God represents divine authority and protection, while the Mark of the Beast signifies submission to worldly, corrupt power. The seal of God is a spiritual mark, denoting faith and obedience to God, whereas the mark of the beast is often interpreted as a physical or visible sign of compliance with evil forces. The seal of God signifies eternal salvation and alignment with God's will, while the mark represents temporal gain at the cost of spiritual condemnation. The Mark in Ezekiel In Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4, a similar protective seal was given to the righteous before Jerusalem was judged. In this chapter, six executioners are seen coming from the north, the direction from which the Babylonians were to come, to destroy idolaters. Those who opposed the idolatry were sealed by a mark on their foreheads so that they would not be slain. Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4. The Lord said to him, Go through the midst of the city, throughout all of Jerusalem, and put a mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh in distress and grieve over all the repulsive acts which are being committed in it. Conclusion In conclusion, the seal of God, particularly in the context of the book of Revelation, holds great significance, inviting deeper study and reflection. The seal of God in Revelation shows God's steady promise to protect us in hard times and reminds us of who we are as followers of Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in your infinite wisdom and grace, you have revealed to us the mysteries of your will through your word. As we ponder the profound truth of the seal of God, as described in the book of Revelation, we approach your throne with hearts seeking understanding and spirits yearning for your guidance. Lord, we ask for your divine seal upon our lives. May this seal not be a mark seen by human eyes, but a transformation felt deep within our souls. Let it be a symbol of our unwavering faith in you, our commitment to walk in your ways, and our determination to stand firm in your truth in the midst of the challenges of this world. Help us, O oh God to have the characteristics of those who bear your seal, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Teach us to live in such a way that our thoughts, words, and actions reflect your love and light in this world. Keep us safe from lies and things that tempt us. Help us to always focus on Jesus, stay true to what the Bible teaches, and listen to what your Holy Spirit tells us. When we feel unsure or scared, help us remember that you always take care of those who belong to you. We pray for those still seeking, still questioning, still wandering. May they come to recognize the beauty and security of your seal. Use us as vessels, Lord, to share your love and truth with them. In all things, we give you glory, for you are our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. We trust in your unfailing love and mercy, knowing that in your presence we find safety, peace, and eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen.